There's something so magical about harvesting your own produce from your vegetable garden. You've sown, grown and cared for these plants for weeks, potentially many months, and then you're rewarded with flavour and goodness. And harvesting is pretty straightforward, but in this video, I'm just going to give you a few tips to really help you get the most from the harvest in your garden this growing season. The first tip is to try and harvest your crops as early in the morning as possible because they're full of moisture, they're juicy and fresh. They spent the whole night trying to replenish the moisture that they lost yesterday due to respiration. And you want to harvest them when the temperatures outside are cool because respiration means moisture loss. So if you can capture them and put these in the fridge or in cold storage as soon as possible, then they're not going to lose that moisture and they're going to stay fresher for longer. This is especially important when you're harvesting your leafy greens because these can lose moisture so quickly. And one other thing that plants do during the night is convert all of the starches into sugars, which means you're going to get sweeter tasting crops. If you're growing root vegetables, for example, beetroot, one thing you want to do is make sure that they have enough space around them uh, to bulk up and develop nice roots like this. So whether you've sown them direct like I have for this beetroot or you've multi-sown them, what you want to do is to start looking for the biggest ones in the rows and harvest them because what this does is that you've got a nice harvest here um, but because you've got a lot of smaller plants in there it's then going to create the space for these to also bulk out as well which just means over time you're gonna get better harvests. For fruiting vegetables in particular, you want to take a little but often approach to harvesting to avoid becoming overrun with massive vegetables. And fruiting vegetables can also go over pretty quickly, so you just want to hit them at their peak freshness, whatever that is for you. The little and often approach also applies to leafy greens, whether that's kale or your lettuce. The reason why is because if you take too much in one go, the plant's photosynthesis abilities will be severely reduced, which will either slow down or stunt the growth a bit. So if you take a little and often approach, it means that it can continue growing uh, and having consistent results rather than taking a load, waiting for it to grow back for a while and then taking another load. One thing that is inevitable with growing food is that you are going to experience gluts. We're harvesting loads of pickling gherkins at the moment. Uh, something else, of course, going to be gluts or courgettes if you have a lot of plants. But this is an excuse um, to actually become really creative. And I love to go online, best source ever, for finding loads of different recipe ideas, uh, mainly inspired by other cuisine styles and cultures. So I just search easy courgette recipes and it comes up with hundreds of different variations. Something that I love doing though is very simple fridge pickles using these are made from uh, the gherkins and cucumbers grown here. I've actually shared a recipe on this on my Patreon page if you want to check that out. If you're not currently a Patreon you can join for three dollars a month get two extra videos every single week and you can head over to this link to check it out. One of the easiest ways that you can get more harvest from your garden without actually growing any extra plants is by knowing what plants give you more than one kind of harvest. I'll give you three examples within the same raised bed. The first one is coriander. I'm letting this flower and set seed and then you've got green coriander, which is a rarity um, in the UK. Uh, and I can also let them dry for coriander seeds to chuck into some cooking. Uh, beetroots here. You can eat the leaves, either lightly cook them, add them into salads, and you can even eat carrot tops. And there are many other things around the garden as well that give you more than one type of harvest. For example, if you get a little bit bored of radish, let it flower and you can eat the radish seed pods. For fennel, not just the bulbs, but also the leaves. For kale, harvest the leaves during winter, but then in March and April, let them flower and eat the delicious flower shoots. With onions, doesn't just have to be the bulb. You can also use the leaves as a spring green alternative. 
There are many companion plants that are also edible. For example, nasturtiums, you can eat the leaves, uh, the flowers, uh, and also borage flowers make an excellent colorful addition to any salad. With peas, it's not just the pods, you can also eat pea shoots. And for broad beans, it's a very similar story to the peas. You can eat the beans and you can also eat broad bean tops. Another thing that you can eat is actually the male flowers of the courgette plants. Of course, you can eat the female flowers, which are the ones that have like a mini fruit attached to it. But the reason why you want to harvest male flowers is because these aren't actually going to create a fruit. But just make sure that you know what a male flower is. It's always attached to a long, thin stem. And try not to take every single male flower because it's essential for pollinating the female flowers. But a really nice way to enjoy these are either in salads or you can lightly stir fry them. If you're a beginner gardener, one thing you've got to understand is what kind of crops can actually stay in the ground all winter. So root vegetables, for example, carrots and beetroot, can actually stay outside in our zone, zone 8. Um, what I need to do is just mulch them with a bit of straw after Christmas or put over some fleece. And I can still harvest them up until March. There are some other things which don't need protection, for example, parsnips um, and also swedes, which I have grown here. Uh, but why is this important? Well, if you understand what can stay in the ground, it means you can free up time to harvest fruiting vegetables that can't stay in the same shape, for example, peas, for too long, otherwise they'll go over. So this means by knowing what you can leave in place, you'll then have more time and also more space in your house to prepare and sort through the summer crops. There is actually one other kind of harvest that you can do that doesn't involve eating things directly, but it's about getting ready for next year. And that is to let things grow so you can save seed from them. At the moment, these peas are beginning to really go over. You can see the loss of color in the leaves. They've produced abundantly, um, but every plant will kind of reach a stage where either it goes to flower or things start to dry up a bit. So this isn't ready yet. I'm gonna wait for all of these pea pods um, to turn brown and dry out nicely. And then I'm gonna save these seeds. And these seeds will make next year's crop. Seed saving at first can seem a little bit daunting or scary, um, but something that you should check out is Liz Zorab has a video about seed saving, and I'm also going to be doing a beginner's guide to seed saving later on this year. And it's one of the best ways uh, that you can actually save money in the garden and just get extra things from the crops that you have grown. Early in this video, I mentioned the importance of trying to harvest things like your leafy greens as early on in the morning as possible. But it's different when it comes to herbs. So annual herbs, for example, parsley, which is back up in the vegetable garden, and perennial herbs uh, like the sage, um, I've also got marjoram, mint, uh, rosemary behind me. You actually want to harvest these literally just before cooking and chances are you're going to use these for your dinner or your supper and they'll actually have lost a bit of moisture during the day but that's not bad because what it means is the flavour is going to be a little bit more intensified which is always a good thing when it comes to cooking with herbs. So those are just some hints and tips on how to get the most out of the harvest in your vegetable garden because you spent a lot of time and energy and passion into growing things. It's important that you really get the best from them. For me, the next big exciting harvest is going to be removing the onions from the onion bed. But that's actually going to create a bit of an issue because I'm going to have empty space. So in next week's video, next Saturday, I'm going to be doing a video all about ideas to cope with empty gaps uh, and spaces in your raised beds in August. So stay tuned for that. And in the meantime, here are two different videos you may want to check out. Thanks again for watching and see you again soon. Goodbye.